So I think it's safe to say we can press that restart button with the Jets in New York, ending their relationship with Sam Darnold after going 13 to 25 in three seasons. Darnold now in Carolina for a fresh start. That opens the door for maybe Zach Wilson, BYU QB coming off a strong season with the Cougars that had him trending up the draft board ever since the season ended. And it started to look like he has a chance to become the new guy in the Big Apple coming off the board and maybe the second QB after Trevor Lawrence at that number two pick with the Jets. So Joe Douglas hoping Wilson can kind of fit the build and spark the organization in the right direction. Uh, New York, no strangers at all to selecting QBs in the first round. Mentioned Sam Darnold, how those three years went. Mark Sanchez, back-to-back -back AFC Championship games. Pennington, O'Brien there, making it to the postseason. But that's as far the Jets have been. Hopefully Wilson can help this ship go the right way. All right, to take a deep dive into this, Ryan Wilson checking out HQ. And, and since the season started, Wilson has climbed up from the top five, maybe a top three, and now number two with the Jets. Is this where we're expecting him to go come draft day? Yeah, Brandon, if Trevor Lawrence is 100%, it certainly feels like Zach Wilson is 99.9% .9 at this point. Last week, our Jonathan Jones reported that it's, it's a done deal. The Jets are going number two with Zach Wilson. Pete Prisco echoed those same sentiments. So it certainly feels like that's what's going to happen. And you're exactly right. 2019, you talked to NFL teams, and Zach Wilson wasn't on anyone's radar. Uh, he was injured for part of the season. He had a shoulder procedure during the offseason. Came back in 2020 and was lights out from start to finish. Uh, there was very few holes in his game. You could say sometimes maybe he's too much of a gunslinger mentality, but more times than not, he made those plays work out. So that is that what the, the Jets are looking for in terms of their next franchise quarterback? Yeah, because that's what they're going to get. Now the question becomes, okay, he played at BYU uh, against a pretty light schedule. It wasn't a Power 5 schedule. But I say, look, that's one thing I understand what you're saying, but a year ago, I was saying the exact same things about Jordan Love, who I liked a lot. The difference is Jordan Love had a terrible 2019 season, still found his way into the first round. Zach Wilson balled out every single game. Even the game he lost to Coastal Carolina, they had a chance to win at the very end of the goal line there on an incomplete pass. He can get it done. The question now just becomes, can he get it done against NFL talent week in and week out under the bright lights being in New York City? And we'll find out shortly. Uh, New York City ate up uh, and spat out Sam Darnold, and now he's in Carolina. You certainly hope for a different fate if you're Joe Douglas, the GM, and head coach Robert Sala in his first year with Zach Wilson. You, you hit the nail on the head there. A question about a pressure on Joe Douglas there, parting ways with Sam Darnold, and like you said, making it look like Zach Wilson is the answer there. I mean, looking at this draft, they have 10 picks this year. You mentioned head coach R Robert Sala, his first time there. How much pressure is on Douglas to get this right in this draft and maybe in the future as well? There, there's a lot of pressure. This is the number two overall pick. You do not want to be here often. And we saw this just a few years ago when the Bears traded up to get Mitchell Trubisky and they passed on Deshaun Watson and they passed on Patrick Mahomes. That haunts Bears GM Ryan Pace to this day. I'm sure he still thinks about it because people continue to bring it up to him. So you don't want to be in a position where we have, we're going to have five quarterbacks go in the first round. You don't want to pick the wrong one. Trevor Lawrence will be gone. You have four others to choose from. There's probably some temptation in the back of Joe Douglas's mind. Do I want Justin Fields? Do I want a Matt Jones? Do I even want a Trey Lance? Uh, given whatever those virtues are that those quarterbacks have that maybe Zach Wilson doesn't. Zach Wilson's slightly undersized. There are some durability concerns. But if that's who they love, that's who they love. And I, I feel like that the Jets have been on the Zach Wilson train uh, for weeks now, if not months. And they're rolling with Zach Wilson. They have a ton of other picks, as you mentioned. They have 10, 10 picks, uh, nine after Zach Wilson. And they have a lot of holes to fill. They did some things in free agency with all the cap space. They're an organization moving in the right direction. But they're also an organization in the same division with the Bills and what it's going to look like the resurgent Patriots after a year off. So there's going to be a ton of competition. And uh, it starts with nailing the quarterback position at number two. So there's an immense amount of pressure on Joe Douglas, on Robert Sala, the first-year head coach, and ultimately Zach Wilson, should he be the guy they take at number two. All right, you mentioned there, of course, uh, they have a lot of holes to fill there. Options outside of Zach Wilson at two. You look at the rest of the picks they have. What spots do they need to fill in this year's draft? Well, you can name a position, and it's a spot they need to fill. Uh, they have left tackle Mekhi Beckton last year's first-round pick. He played at an extremely high level. The good news is they have two first-round picks this year from the Jamal Adams trade. So that second first-round pick, I haven't taken Gregory Rousseau, the edge rusher, out of Miami. Uh, they need help off the edge. We know that Greg Williams... Uh, had some interesting schemes last year that cost the Jets football games. He has since been relieved of his duties, but they still need to get better there. Then I circle back at the top of round two with Javante Williams, who could end up, Brandon, being the first running back uh, drafted. He's that good. 
played at North Carolina, uh, had a fantastic season. And then you bolster the offensive line in round three with Walker Little, who opted out last year, has an injury history, but was one of the best players coming out of Texas out of high school. And then in round four, I have him bolstering the secondary with Sean Wade, uh, who had a down year. There's no other way to say it in 2020 with Ohio State after a pretty good 2019 campaign. He played in the slot in 2019, moved outside in 2020. His future may actually be at safety. But all those players taken together uh, make that football team better immediately. A lot of those players see the field immediately and, again, allow them to compete in a division that's going to be really good in the, NFC, in the AFC East. Excuse me. All right, yesterday we looked at the, your top 150 from 150 to 120. Let's look from 120 to 90. A few guys from the U there, Brevin Jordan and Quincy Roche. Tell us about those guys a little bit. Yeah, Brevin Jordan is 6'2", about 247 as a tight end, so he's not Gronk when he's out there, but he's a great athlete. He makes a lot of plays in the passing game. Does he have to improve as a blogger? Yeah, but you can say that about just about every move tight end, not only those guys coming out of college, but some of the guys in the NFL. He reminds me a little bit of John New Smith and the way you could use him, uh, and, and that's an interesting prospect uh, in the pass-heavy NFL league where tight ends are now thought of more slot receivers or big wide receivers down the seam. Uh, he is my tight end five right now. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go in the third round. He's only going to get better as he continues to, to improve, especially as a blocker. But he, he's already an asset in the pass game. As for Brevin Jordan, uh, excuse me, as for Quincy Roche, the edge rusher transfer from Temple, it was going to be him, Greg Rousseau, and Jalen Phillips on that defensive line. Obviously, Rousseau opted out, but Quincy uh, Roche came over from Temple. We had a really good season in 2019. Wasn't quite as dominant in 2020 uh, against those Power 5 teams. I expect him to go in the third round, maybe the fourth round. He needs to get an edge bit stronger. Uh, he's not quite the force that we saw Jalen Phillips, his, his mate on the other end, uh, was there during the season. But a really good player, has a great story, and, and I expect him to be a good NFL player at the next level, at least as a situational pass rusher to begin his NFL career. All right, Ryan Wilson breaking it down there for his top 150, of course. 120 to 90 range. You catch the rest this week. Ryan, appreciate your time as always. Don't forget, you can also catch up with the Fix Six podcast as well. See all the fellas, they talk about everything. The top five, we're breaking out the top five teams, a deep dive in that tomorrow. The Niners, of course, making some moves up to number three. Then the rest of the top 150 as well from Ryan is to catch the others as well. And in NBA draft, the NFL draft, excuse me, QB prospects, talking about Trevor Lawrence. Could he be the best ever? at the position. Join the conversation, download, and give them a listen. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.